Technology gifts for any budget. Hello everybody, welcome to Builder Buy. I'm your host, Gil Boyd. Today we're going to take a look at a list that we had that started with 10 items. Uh, this is for the holidays. I hope you'll enjoy this. The list grew. We've got 26 items on the list. We started with storage and I'm going to go through it real quickly. Uh, some of the items with storage, we've got six items we want to show you. Then we went to uh, some streaming devices. We've got three of those we're going to show you. A chance to get some books, if for those of you that read, at a really good deal. You can't beat the price of zero. Now we're going to put up a link to four different business books for those of you that like some interesting books on business that, um, well, when you can get them for free, you can't beat the price. And you can get up to two of them. All you have to do is sign up for Audible. So we're going to share that with you as well. Then for those of you that have cameras, we're going to put up a color correction chart. Something you can stick in your pocket, something you can stick in your camera bag. Whether you're using one camera or whether you're using four cameras, something like that can come in really handy. So that way you can work on your color correction. And that brings us to the next point. We're going to put up a link to DaVinci Resolve that I think you guys will find interesting. Now, we have a product number for DaVinci Resolve on Amazon, but nobody's got any stock and nobody wants to put that part number out there. Uh, I'll keep searching that part number that was given to me by a vendor, but until that works, the link I'm going to give you is going to take you into B&H. Now, B&H has a product number that will get you two things. One, the license for DaVinci Resolve, and two, you'll be able to get the USB panel, and that alone is going to be worth the price of admission. That's probably the most exciting thing on the list. It's kind of in the middle of the list, but I hope you'll enjoy that. Now, for those of us that are on the sneaker network, we're also going to have some thumb drives, and I'm going to give you an example of about two or three thumb drives. And we have to cover camera memory. Most all cameras use SDXC memory. So we're going to give you a couple different types that I hope you'll find interesting. Uh, speed on those is amazing. The nice thing, whether you do 4K or not, even if you're just doing 1080. Get the faster cards. Faster cards are a good deal for the money. The faster cards also format quicker. We're going to have you some advice that coming up when we get back to that task. Then we're going to take a look at a graphics tablet. Now, for the artist, the digital artist especially, I'm going to show you a particular graphics tablet that we're going to be looking at in a future video that, uh, well, let me save the details for when we get to that. And one last item for content creation specifically. I want to show you three different laptops. Two, depending on where your budget's at, and one, what you really need. Now, I asked somebody this question the other day. You want a laptop for content creation, what's your budget? They said $800. Okay. Can't do that. You need to spend at least $1,500 to get something that you can upgrade. And when we get to the laptops, I've got some tips I'm going to share with you what to look for. And I'm going to show you three different models and why one's more expensive than the other. And we're going to look at the five major components that are in a laptop. So I hope you'll stay with us for that. And for those of you that just want to cut to the chase, all this information that I'm going to share with you, we're going to have in the list that will be in the description that you can take a look at and you don't have to listen to me. But for those that want to listen and get some extra information, I hope you're going to enjoy this. This ought to be fun. Thanks for joining us. Love you guys. Happy holidays. I've got a list of links I'm going to show you. We're going to start with the Samsung T7 Portable SSD. Now what's interesting about this is the speed. This is going to be on USB-C. These six drives I'm going to show you, we did a video about data management that you might want to take a look at where we talk about USB 3.0, USB-C, and Thunderbolt 3. So if you're looking at the different technologies and trying to sort some of that out, please watch that video. Uh, but as it relates to what we're going to do now for this gift idea list, we're going to start with something that kind of is in the middle. There's two types of external storage you need to be looking at. One where you create and then you move it on where you can store that data, or two, where you've got a disk that we're going to call a working drive. The drives I'm going to show you on the list are kind of in the middle where they can be used as a working drive because they're going to use USB-C. They're not the fastest, but they're not the slowest. And because they're in the middle, the price is kind of in the middle. Now, I'll say, and I'll preface this right now, you want to stick with something about a 2 terabyte or more, but if price is the issue and you're just trying to get started, I'm going to show you a couple of 1 terabyte drives that meet that specification. And that would be this drive, the Samsung. This is a T7 portable SSD 1 terabyte. This will do 1050 megabytes transfer rate. It's USB-C. You can also get this in a 2 terabyte. That's a link that will get you started. And as we breeze through these, the rest of these are going to be SanDisk, except I've got a Lacey I'm going to show you. This also is a 1 terabyte drive. Now, what I like about these, this drive will fit in your pocket. And I mean in your pocket. It's smaller than a smartphone. 
I had a chance to get hold of one of these. I got it, I believe, at Costco. It was a 500 gig drive, amazingly small. The nice thing about it, it's not only USB-C, but it's also got the little adapter for it, so it'll go for USB 3. Pretty small, pretty portable. The only thing that's exposed is the connector on the bottom where you plug in the cable. But uh, if you're doing content creation, I would say step up to this because uh, it's smaller, it's more compact, easier to carry, uh, easier to transfer data to. And I like the price. It's on sale right now. And I, I'll have all these links up with the part numbers. And as we move on down the line with this, they also have this in a 2 terabyte version. And I would encourage the 2 terabyte if you're going to be doing a lot of content creation. How long will that last? Well, that's tough to say. Uh, my advice, a 2 terabyte drive ought to last most content creators that are starting out. A 2 terabyte should last you about a year. But if you need something that you're uh, needing a working drive, that 1 terabyte will work for now. You can get something else later. Because we've got some other memory we need to be looking at. And I want to get into that, but I want to show you some of these items because I think this is pretty exciting stuff. This is a way to get started and have something small. Smaller than your phone, you can carry it in your shirt pocket or your pants pocket. So the next one on the list is going to the SanDisk 2 terabyte. And again, the transfer rate on these is great. It's USB-C. It's also USB 3.0 because of the cable that comes with it. Same size. You get an idea of the price. Now, I'm going to step into a different model. And if you notice, these were Extreme Portable. This is a SanDisk Extreme Pro. This is a faster drive in a one terabyte. So when you say, why is one more expensive than the other one? Take a look at that, 2,000 megabytes. Now, that's not as fast as an NVMe drive, but that's an NVMe drive in there. And the uh, chain is only as strong as the weakest link. So your, your slowest connection is your data connection because that's on a USB-C. That's pretty much where your bottleneck is at. If this were on Thunderbolt 3, we would get a little bit more throughput. But for 2,000 megabytes, that's a pretty good deal for the money. $230. It's available. Maybe it'll go on sale, but that's a one terabyte. So you have to, you have to weigh your options. If you're looking at a drive for your content creation, and that's going to be your working drive, you want the faster drive. If, however, that drive is going to be a storage drive, then you can go with a slower drive. So couple of options just something to think about whether you're getting it for yourself or for somebody else so then the next one we go to will be a SanDisk 2 terabyte and this is the Extreme Pro and that would be the ideal drive 2 terabytes 2,000 megabytes and your standard NVMe drive on PCI Express 3.0 would be 3,500 megabytes so this gives you an idea of the kind of numbers you're looking at now I'm going to show you another drive as we go a different direction this has a slower interface but it's 4 terabytes that's probably the best bang for the buck. It's USB-C, but it's a, slower, it's a slower drive. And if you look at the price, it's really bang for the buck. But even though you can use that for content creation, I would not use that drive as a primary drive to create content as a working drive. I would use that as a storage drive. So whatever you've got in your computer, use that as your content creation for your working drive. Use this as your storage drive. So it gives you some idea of parameters you're looking at. What we're trying to look at are items that work for all budgets so you can figure out your price point what works best for you. So the next item on the list we're going to take a look at, and now we're going to get into streaming devices. And this is kind of interesting for streaming devices because there's a couple of directions we can go. There's one product that is my favorite. I like something that's all-inclusive that takes care of everything, which is hardware and software. But a lot of people are using third-party software programs. So this first one I'm going to show you, a particular company has just come out new with this product. But this product is the same as some other brands. This is a company that makes professional products. And this is from Atom OS. And this is Atom OS Connect. Now, this will do, if you'll notice over here, it shows it'll do an HDMI input up to 4K30, and it'll be a USB output. Now, this goes... Now what you do with a device like this, your camera or whatever your source is, plugs into this device. Then your computer is in between and this plugs into the computer. So if you're bringing in 4K30, you can go out in 108060. 108060 for what it does, can't beat it for the price. But it's a hardware solution only, there is no software with it. But it will work with all the programs like OBS and all those others. So if you're looking for one of the devices like the Elgato CamLink, and they're kind of expensive and hard to find, this will work. But I want to take you to the next device, which is all-inclusive hardware and software, because we like to keep it simple. And I'll show you the device we stream with. So let's flip over, and we'll take a look at the Elgato. 
Now that's the Elgato CanLink 4K. I got to tell you, we had the original Elgato and I didn't like it because this device is really kind of a dumb device. And what do I mean by that? It depends upon the processor. Any of these devices you get like this, when it's external, it depends upon the processor, the CPU processor that's in your computer or your laptop. So this will work with a desktop or a laptop, but you need to have something like an i7. If you're trying to do this with an i5, you're going to bog it down. You're going to be disappointed in the results. So I would strongly encourage you to have an i7 for content creation as well as for uh, doing your streaming. But the cam link is from Elgato, and you get an idea of the price, what that's about. 1080p 60 or 4K 4K at 30, but it will pass 4K 30 through the device. So you have to decide. For a while, the Elgato cam link 4K was scarce as hen's teeth. It's available again now. We're going to have a link up on it. But I want to take you to the next Elgato device. And while I'm at it, we're going to look at the first one. Now, this is an Elgato HD60. This is a card that goes in a computer. The nice thing about this, because it doesn't use the uh, CPU, it's got its own uh, processor in it. If you've got a desktop computer, that's the way to go. It takes a single lane slot. It's not real heavy duty on resources. They also make one for 4K that takes a four lane slot. A little more expensive, depends on what your needs are. If you're not doing 4K, don't buy 4K because then it becomes a difference of is it a need or is it a want. If it's just something you want, then uh, but you're not going to use, you don't need it. If you don't need it, don't buy it. Only buy what you need because the technology is changing. But I want to let you know about this device because we have used this in a computer and it is wonderful. It's hardware and software. Once you buy the hardware, once you install it, you plug your camera or whatever device into the HDMI and that immediately goes out on the internet. There's no USB cable to plug in because it's working off the PCI bus. But there's also an external version that works with a laptop, and I'm going to show you that one next. And this one is the Elgato HD60S. That's an external device. And again, you want to make sure you've got a processor that can handle this because uh, e even though you can use Intel i5, I would strongly encourage an i7 or greater. And uh, that's something we're going to build up to as we get to the laptops for content creation. I'm just seeing what we've used. Now, we use this specifically with an AMD FX8350 CPU on a 990FX chipset, and it worked fine. But that one computer did just that and nothing else. So, and we've used it both ways, both the internal and the external. But this is a complete solution, these two devices, hardware and software. And the nice thing about it, I want to show you a link for the software. As we look at this product, you can go to Elgato Downloads, and I'm going to put this link up as well. We may talk more about Stream Deck Mobile later. There are uh, three versions of that. That's an amazing device when you're streaming. And it'll work with your phone or it can work with a computer. But the purpose of this, you can select your product. And if we look at Capture for HD60 or the 4K60 or the HD60 Pro or the 4K60 Pro, any one of these devices, and we look for the Windows driver, these will work with Mac and Windows. There's a 4K Capture utility and there's a Game Capture. That game capture program is the program you use to initialize the request to do your streaming. You work with that application. You don't have to download anything else. It's a complete package. All you have to have is the stream key from whatever your CDN, your content delivery network is. Plug it into that software and it goes. The one thing I would encourage that I'll give you this tidbit now, by default it's going to have two things turned on. One, preview so you can see what's going on. Turn that off. The other thing it's going to do, it's going to be recording a copy of whatever you're streaming out. Leave that on, but make sure you have enough space to handle the stream. And it needs to be an internal drive so that it can go fast enough. And it'll work with a spinning drive, but just make sure you've got plenty of room for it. It's super easy. I like the way it works. Can't beat it for a complete solution. And I want to give you that link. So now let's take a look at another little device. Everybody, everybody has got to have a mouse. I like this mouse. I've been using Microsoft Mice for a long time. I've had one that just recently finally decided to give up the ghost. And uh, I've been using these mice, I hate to admit how long, for over 20 years. They work. Uh, they were part of a business package that uh, Microsoft had with a keyboard and a mouse. And it, it was a deal. Business package. Bought them by the case. I wish I'd have saved a couple of cases of them because they worked. It was a four-button mouse. The reason I'm telling you about this, I've tried a couple of these mice. And um, I'm using one of them. It's a great mouse. You can replace the switches in it. It's just, it's phenomenal. And for the price, it's a good deal. So that's why I put it in the list. 
and it's an Asus Gladius 2. I'm using a Gladius 1. I have a Gladius 2. I haven't unboxed it yet. Price is not too bad. And the light pulsates. You don't have to install the software. And, and I wouldn't install the software because I look at all those things. Those lights are pretty, but that's bloatware if you want to change the lights. Leave it. Let it pulse red. You don't need extra stuff because when you're doing content creation, you want to stay focused on what that machine is intended to do. And it's intended to work and work for you. But I want to tell you about this mouse because it's a really nice mouse. It's four buttons. It's got a roller wheel on it. And the scroll wheel is really, really nice. It has Omron switches, which are replaceable. comes in a nice little bag. Even the cable is detachable. And it has two lengths of cables. It's a good mouse. So coming up next on the list, these are the books for Audible. And I'm going to show you a list of several books. Now this particular book, this is Marketing by Seth Godin. You can't be seen until you learn to see. You have to think about that. But if you'll notice, this book is free. And if you sign up for Audible, you can get, I believe, two books. That would be one. I'm going to show you another one. All four of these books, if you sign up for an Audible, you should be able to get two of them, especially if you have Amazon Prime. The second book, Eat That Frog, 21 Great ways to stop procrastinating and get more done in less. Now this is Brian Tracy. I enjoy everything he does and have for a long time. And uh, he's been involved with a lot of the Nightingale Conant materials. So I, I wanted to recommend this book because it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good one. That's two books. Let's go to book number three. Now this one is Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion. Again, audiobook free. This is by Robert, Robert Cialdini. And the next book I want to show you, Scaling Up. Now this is an update of another book that was put out a couple of years prior. It's not a brand new book. It's been out for a while. But if you can get it as an audio book and get it for free, this is Scaling Up. How a few companies make it and why the rest don't. Rockefeller Habits 2.0. An amazing book worth reading and um, give you insight into the business mind. We've done the books. That's four books. So as we go through the categories, that gets us at storage, streaming, a mouse, and for those that read, an audible book. If you don't have time to sit down and read the print, you can get the book, audio book, and you can listen to it while you're doing other stuff. That way you can keep multitasking. So something to think about. Next item on this list is a color correction chart. If you're going to do video, you might want to look into color correction. Now, for those that want to talk about my color correction, I know, I, I know, I hear you. I know what I need to do, but if I could show you what I'm working with, it would better under, it would, it would be easier to explain and it would be easier for you to understand. I don't have enough lights where I need them because of the way things are arranged in here. So the lighting is a little bit off. I'm, I'm working on trying to resolve that, but I'm totally aware of it. So if anybody wants to say something about it, I already know about it. The x rack Color Checker Passport Photo 2. You've got two devices you can keep in your pocket. And it is about the size of a passport. Uh, what I did is I put it on a lanyard so I can keep it around my neck. I can stick it in my pocket or I can stick it in my shirt. So when I'm on a photo shoot, when I'm ready to do something with the video cameras, I set that out in front. As I start, both cameras take a look at it. So then when I get back, I can take the cameras and I can match. It makes it a lot easier working with multiple cameras. Uh, nice little device, worth the money. Uh, some places are easier to color match than others. And I'll just mention the S-curve. That's a good place to start. Uh, but this is a good idea to uh, have if you're going to be doing video for content creation. So hope that helps. Next item on the list, and this is probably the best deal, the most important deal, and this is only at B&H. Now, I want to preface this by saying I have the item number of what this should be on Amazon. I got it from one vendor, but nobody has stock, so nobody wants to put it up there uh, as a pre-order. Whereas at B&H, they will let you do that. And we've got DaVinci Resolve Studio as well as the USB Speed Editor. So here we are at b and Blackmagic Design DaVinci Resolve 17 Studio with the Speed Editor. This is an activation card. Now, when this started, there were two different SKUs, and they've now put that together. So when you put this one item in your cart, you will get what you've ordered. And it says here right now, pre-order. And I've never recommended beta anything, but i got to tell you, DaVinci Resolve 17 it is amazing. We've installed it, I believe, on five machines right now. I'm getting ready to install it on a sixth machine. And two machines it wouldn't run on. Didn't expect it to. They're six years old. We got a video up about that you can take a look at. But, but this is worth your time, worth your investment. And if this is something you're trying to figure out, you know, in your budget where you want to go for $300 while they're offering this deal, buy the software, get the license, and you also get the edit panel. The edit panel will be amazing. Now, when we can get our hands on one, 
we'll talk about one. But uh, that's a deal worth thinking about, worth mentioning. So moving on from the software, all the rest of these go back to Amazon. I'm going to take a look now at memory. This is different memory. We've looked at uh, drive memory for storage. This is a thumb drive memory. And everybody's got to have, you know, whether you're on the sneaker network or not. And there's a, two different types I would be looking at. One, a 32 gig, because say you want to do a Windows ISO install. Okay, you need to do 32 gig or less. Why is that? Because Windows will format that with FAT32. If you do use a 64 gig stick or larger, it'll go through that cycle and it won't finish and it won't tell you what's wrong. That's what's wrong. It's trying to format that FAT32. It does not format NTFS. So while it's trying to get its legs up under itself to stand up so they can do the install and do all these wonderful things we're doing, you got to start with 32 gigs or less because of FAT32. Until that's overcome, this is a good idea to have some of these. Now, not only would I have some of these, and this is probably the least expensive item here on the list, unless you include the lanyard, I would also get some lanyards to put on these so you can uh, kind of keep track of them. And this particular one, is a Samsung. It's a Samsung Bar Plus 32 gig, 200 megabytes a second. Pretty good speed transfer. And uh, you can get them larger. And I would also suggest, as I mentioned, to look at some lanyards. I will put up a link for some lanyards to make it easy for you to find. So I would suggest probably get a couple of these 32 gig and you might want to get a 64 or 128 gig. You know, sometimes you go someplace and you need to take something to a client and uh, you need to put that video clip on that on that memory stick, that's the way to do it. So now we're going to move on to the next type of memory, and that's going to be memory for your camera. So when we start looking at memory for the camera, I got to preface this first by saying, this came up with uh, one of the Facebook groups where we were doing some help about content creation. Somebody had a Canon M50. And there's two things you need to always remember with your memory for your camera or your video camera. Two things. Number one, when you put that memory in there, format that memory in the device that's going to be using it. Number two, whenever you've done your recording, when you extract that off of that device to put it somewhere else, you need to reformat that card when you put it back in the camera so that it cleans up the file structure. Two things will happen if you don't. One, the camera could overheat, which is a problem with a Canon M50. Or number two, the file structure gets confused. And if you're shooting with multiple cameras, those little segments that get recorded on multiple cameras the more cameras you add, the more difficult it gets to try to put all that back together, especially if you're not using time code. So keep that in mind. Two things. Always format the memory in the device that's going to use it. And when you through shooting your video, always dump that video to something else. So when it goes back in the camera, wipe it. Now, prefacing that, as long as you're using 1080, I would get the fastest memory you can. If you decide to shoot 4K, then you're going to need the faster memory. Why is that? The faster memory will format faster in a camera. Now we use 128 gig cards in the cameras. I can shoot all day long at 1080 59.94 and I will never fill one up. Um, I might if I shot 8 or 10 hours a day I might do 60, 64 gigs but I will not fill up a 120 gig card. But I will never shoot two days straight in a row. Or if I stop and pull that memory out to put it in something else, when that memory goes back in, I take everything off of it. So when it goes back in the camera, I format it, start over. So I preface that by saying, if you're not going to use a 120 gig card, don't buy a 120 gig card. If you're shooting 4K, you will. If you're shooting 1080, stick to the 64 gig cards, but get the speed. So I want to show you this is one at 1000X. These are cards that we use, and you can get them smaller. Uh, they have had 64 gig sticks before in a two pack. There's also been uh, 32 gig sticks in a two pack. But if you select say a 64 gig stick, it may or may not be available. So why am I showing you this? Well, for two reasons. One, I want to show you what we use and why. I want to show you the speed. But two, to look at the price. And three, I'm going to show you something that's faster that's less expensive. And this next one I'm going to show you also is a Lexer. But instead of running at a thousand, this one runs at 1677. Excuse me, this one runs at 1667, which is 250 megabytes. Now, this other one we just looked at runs at 150 megabytes. And for a 120 gig card, it's $70. If we look at a 64 gig card, I can get two 64 gig cards for 50 bucks. Now, we think that's bang for the buck. So, if you're going to get a card, get a couple of cards for $50. Everybody needs memory. Now, 
This is another issue with cameras. Do not buy the micro SD cards and put them in a holder to use that in your camera. If your camera uses SDXC cards, then get SDXC cards. If your device, like your phone, say, uses micro SD, then you have to get micro SD. In other words, get the format that fits the device. Don't get one that uses a holder and put that in your device. Don't go down that road. You're inviting trouble. So I want to share that with you. And one other little thing I want to share with you, if you'll notice the notch on these. See that notch right there on the right where it says 250 megabytes? That's a holdover from the floppy days. If you uh, slide that little uh, lever on the other side, up or down, and I'll show you another image of that. You see the notch on the right? Let me move this a little bit to the left. You see the little tab right next to the 64? If you slide that tab down, that notch on the right gets closed. That's the way we used to do floppies. That's a holdover from floppies. What that means is that media is no longer writable. It becomes read-only. So if you didn't know that, tidbit. Hope that helps. Now, moving on to the next one. This is one I find kind of exciting. I was in hopes I'd have a video up on this before showing this. We don't yet. We will do an unboxing, and I want to show you a tablet. And this is a Wacom tablet. Now, there are other tablets. I've been using Wacom for a very long time. My first Wacom tablet goes back, wow, little bitty. I guess it's probably four by six. It was a serial port. Had two of them. And uh, we don't have serial ports anymore, so it's over 20 years. That's how long I've been using a tablet, and that's how long I've been using a Wacom tablet. So I'm a big fan of Wacom. Used to see them at Comdex all the time. Comdex is gone as well. But I want to show you this because I like the tactile feel and uh, being able to use a pen with paper and seeing something. Um, and this fits that. So if this doesn't fit what you need, there are other tablets you can look at. But this is an idea to jog your memory. And if this helps you for yourself or somebody else, then more power to you. Now, this particular tablet is a Wacom Intuos Pro Paper Edition. It's a digital graphic drawing tablet, work on a Mac or a PC. This is a large, it's a new model, and if you'll notice, you actually put a piece of paper on there and you draw on that piece of paper. And it's about the size, 8.5 by 11, where you can actually draw something you can see. And then whatever you've drawn will go in your software. So if you're doing a drawing, if you're doing a caricature drawing, if you're uh, doing some kind of artwork for uh, advertising, that's just another marketing tool, but it's a fun tool. It's a relaxing tool. Everybody likes to uh, doodle. I know some who have doodled on napkins. Well, here's your doodle pad uh, that uh, hopefully will help you with your content creation work. And we'll have a link up on that. But right now, it's at a pretty good price. They have the large one. They have a medium. Now, coming up on the next one, we're getting close to the end of this. I got three laptops I want to show you, and I want to explain to you the differences in those three. And we'll start with something in the $1,500 range. And of these three, the last one we're going to look at is going to be in the $3,500 range. The first two I'm going to show you have to be upgraded. But of the five components in a laptop, let's take a look at the first one, and we'll go through those five items. We're going to take a look at an Asus. Now, I'll start off by saying usually a gaming laptop is what you want for content creation because it'll have the items you need. Number one, you need a display, 17 inch. You don't want anything smaller. Number two, your primary item is your CPU. This has an Intel i7. And number three, and probably one of the things that's probably least understood is your, uh, your, your display adapter. You want to make sure you've got a display adapter that'll do you some good that's not just wasting, taking up space, especially for content creation. And this one happens to have a GTX 1060. Um, could be better, and I'm going to show you one that's got better, but I wouldn't go any lower than this. This will give you some ideas of what you're looking at for the numbers. Now, two items that need to be upgraded. One, the memory. This has 16 gigs. Two, the drive that's in here. It's a 512. For content creation, you're going to need a 2 terabyte drive in there. This is the way it is. And I would put in that machine a 2 terabyte drive, but that's an upgrade you can do later. So if you need to get into a machine that you can afford now that you can upgrade later, that'll work. But just be prepared with that 512 gig drive, you've got no room to create video. You can create a couple of videos, but you don't have any room to work, to store. Uh, and because that's a 512 gig, it needs a 2 terabyte. It's an easy upgrade. My suggestion, if you buy a laptop like that, the first thing to upgrade would be that drive, number one. You can do it six months to a year. The number two, the RAM, go to 32 gigs, but you don't need 32 gigs right now. Number one, you need storage. You need that drive. So if you buy a laptop like that and you don't want to upgrade that drive, get an external drive, plug in, you're in business. That's laptop number one. Now let's take a look at laptop number two. This happens to be an HP Envy. We did a video some time ago about an HP Envy 17T. Beautiful laptop. Uh, easy to work on 
We did another video about upgrading it, but we could not put an NVMe drive in it. HP makes their laptops for several different markets. Some of those markets, they new to those laptops to save money. I don't know why. Asus doesn't do that. The rest of the vendors don't do that. Lenovo doesn't do that. Uh, it's annoying. This laptop has the basic components you're going to need. Of those five, let's take a look. Number one, we have a 17-inch screen. Number two, an i7. Number three, we have an NVIDIA GeForce. Now, it says a 4 gig GDDR5, but it doesn't say which GDDR5. Okay, it's an NVIDIA GeForce MX330. That is an old laptop. For that alone, if I had to pick between these two, I would go for the Asus. If I were going to get an HP Envy, uh, I got to tell you honestly, uh, I would keep looking because I want better graphics. Of the five items, display number one, CPU number two, and the display adapter number three, those components, you don't upgrade, you don't change, you can't do a thing about it. The two components you can change are the memory and the storage, the drive. So 16 gigs of RAM, we can put in 32. The NVMe drive that's in here, we can change that out. Uh, now this says this has two drives in here, but look how, how big they are, tiny. This comes with a 256 gig NVMe drive, whereas the other one had a 512. This also has a one terabyte drive. That would do for content creation. But because of the, uh, and it's a little bit more expensive, but because of the uh, display adapter, I would not get this particular laptop. I would look for another model. And if I find a better model for the money uh, as an HP Envy, I will let you guys know. But I want to show you an example to compare to. Now I'm going to show you a third laptop that doesn't need to be upgraded. It's got all the bells and whistles. And I want you to understand why it's more expensive because it's ready to go. Now this third laptop, this is an Asus Republic of Gamers Strix SCAR 17. Now the CUK stands for the vendor Computer Upgrade King. They have modified this. But this has everything you need. Now, before you freak out about the price of $3,500, you got to look at what's in there. There is one model that is below this that has half the amount of RAM. You don't need 64 gigs of RAM that's in here. However, for $100 more, they double the RAM. So instead of 32 gigs, for $100 more, you get 64 gigs. It's a, it's a deal in that price range. And, and everything else that's there, it doesn't have an i7 in it. It's got an i9. So let's go over the specs. We've got a 17-inch screen. We've got an i9. We've got, um, look at there, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Super 8 gig. That right there is the primary component and uh, for content creation. Where your display adapter comes in really important when you're doing uh, overlays like text, like we do a lot of that with the, with the, uh, with the videos to emphasize a point, or if you're doing anything graphics like, that's where your GPU takes over. Your CPU probably does 90% of the work, but your GPU, your display adapter, that does on average about 10% of the work with overlays. But if you get something that's graphics intensive, then it takes over and does all the work or the majority of that work. So having something like a 2080 Ti in there with eight gigs on it would come in real handy if you're doing content creation. Now, in the place of these three laptops, the first two that need to be upgraded, those laptops are going to be good for probably three to five years. This laptop, my expectation would be you'll get about seven or eight years out of it. That's, that's just my perspective and where I'm coming from. So let's go back and look at the other two items that can be upgraded but don't need to be. As I mentioned, the RAM, 64 gigs. We don't need to change that out. And it's got a two terabyte NVMe SSD. All right, there you go. That's a machine for content creation. That's where you need to be. That's what you're looking at. Now, you have to realize this is an investment in your business. But as we said with this list, we wanted to have something for all ranges to give you some ideas to kind of get the memory going, depending on whether it's uh, this is how good I've been or whether you're doing this for, for one of your loved ones. And I'll tell you right now, if you got your family, love them while you can. Thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoyed this. My name is Gil Boyd. This is Builder Buy. Happy holidays, everybody, and I want to thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next video. I got one last item here I want to show you right quick, and this is something if you want to make your own portable external drive. IC Doc has just come out with this new device. I found out about this probably a day, either today or yesterday, and this is an M.2 NVMe device. You put your own NVMe drive in there, whatever size you want. So if you're trying to do this as a gift for a friend, uh, man, this is, a, this is a neat little package to go with. This looks like it has USB-C, and it may have, if it doesn't include the adapter, you can get one. But for $60 from IC Doc, 
we've always had good luck with products from IcyDoc. In fact, we use it IcyDoc. We use IcyDoc for our SSDs. In other words, if I need to take a regular SSD, not an M.2, but a regular SSD, I put it in the IcyDoc. Now they have two types of racks, a metal one and a plastic one. Don't mess with the plastic ones. This metal one, that's the way to go. I can put a drive in there, protects the drive and the connector, and now fits in a three and a half inch, and I put that into one of those external drives. But I want to share that with you. But uh, we've been using IcyDoc for a long time. And there's some other things IcyDoc has come out with for NVMe drives that we're going to tell you about in the future. But I want to share this one with you because I think that's pretty exciting. So hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. My name's Gil Boyd. This is Builder Buy. We look forward to seeing you next video. And we're out. <laughs> <laughs>